Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peer-to-Peer -Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I have Blima Erin Troy. She's the founder and CEO of the Designers Group. They have offices in New York, Miami, and Toronto. They've been featured in Forbes, Fast Company, and Real Estate Weekly. Blima, thank you so much for being on Peer-to-Peer. -Peer. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's a pleasure. I met Blima, I think maybe two years ago in 2019 at the Red and NYC event here in New York City. I think, and it's funny, uh, Blima, I do remember when I first saw you a couple of months ago when we were talking about uh, doing some interviews with Selman. And I remember I said, wait a minute, I interviewed her before. And it was at Selman's event. Oh my God, I don't know. I think it might've been the summer of 2019. I mean, my God, how time has flown uh, since that time we met. Yes, <laughs> completely different world that we yeah. find ourselves in. Oh my God. So anyway, so I always like to ask an entrepreneur like yourself, did you always want to be an entrepreneur when you were younger? This, was this something that you wanted to do? Or were you, this came to you suddenly maybe when you got a little older? So I always love to create, which is kind of part of why I love design so much. And I think part of creating, you could add the added facet of creating a company. So my main focus was actually the design. I started off with a partner, we were doing residential projects and it metamorphosized into this that we have three locations and you know, a large team working on our project. So it wasn't necessarily something that I planned, but all of our projects and all our work kind of led into it. So um, did you get the support that you needed early on, you know, when you started your career um, or you were just basically just chugging along and then it grew into, you know, where you are now? So my parents always taught me and always guided me with the phrase, you could do whatever it is that you want to do. And they really encouraged me and they saw how much I love design and really gave me the skills to be able to do what I'm doing. You know, I went to school when I was younger, I did art classes and I just always felt like if I set my mind to something, I could do that. I could do it. And I really do credit that to my parents. Well, listen, it was I have in to make blood. sure I yes, have to yes. sure they hear this so that they know <laughs> that I'm saying this. <laughs> yeah, and you appreciate the help, obviously. So do you remember your first project and how did you feel about it? And can you talk about it? Do you remember? Yes. That was what, maybe a year ago? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> so my first project was a residential project. And I always tell my team about this project because in design, there is so much room for error because we're imagining a space and there's so much that comes up until it actually gets executed that there's a large room for error. And in my first project that I worked on, it was a residential project where we designed something beautiful for the space. And as the furniture was starting to arrive, we realized that the sofa did not fit through the door oh. because we made sure the sofa fit in the space but we forgot that the door frame wasn't large enough. So it's something that I always remember now, anytime I'm doing a project, I always think about how we're getting the material in. Like right now we're working on an office project and we want to do a very large size conference table made out of a slab of stone. Right. And we, we actually like thought about that. Like, how are we getting the stone into the space? Does it fit? And we realized it probably won't unless we use a crane. So, I always say that mistakes are mistakes and we learn from them, but let's make the mistakes that we make sure to learn from and always remember those lessons and make sure never to do them again. Well, it's all about trial and error, right, uh, Blima? I mean, it's, you know, you made that, I won't say a mistake, but at least you learn from it and then you move on. Now, you know, you have to measure and then you have to get the crane and it's amazing how things can alter within minutes, you know? And obviously, you, again, you made the change and you learn from it, right? I mean, so when you do your, your projects, and in fact, before I go there, when you look for your clients or they look for you, how do you get your clients? Like, how do they find Blima? At this point, it's really been word of mouth and people seeing our work and wanting to work with us. When I moved to New York, I was originally back and forth between Toronto. I moved to New York for personal reasons and I was managing the firm there. Okay. And slowly there were people that I knew 
from Toronto that asked me to do projects for them. And that one project led to another. And we put a lot of effort and a lot of work into our projects and making sure that our clients are happy. And I think the end result is not only a fabulous interior, but also clients that appreciate us being with them through every step of the way. So uh, to me, that's really the best recommendation. First of all, being able to walk into the space and see it and experience it, but also having happy clients wanting to recommend us to their friends and their partners. And that's really where we get most of our projects. Yeah, I mean, that's the best advertisement, word of mouth. I mean, do you use social media at all to, uh, I mean, I know we met, uh, I contacted you through Twitter, but do you use any other platforms for, um, for your business? Definitely, definitely. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram. I actually just joined Clubhouse. That's been a lot of fun. Okay. And I, we're a visual business, so we love to showcase our process. We want our clients and friends to see the process, the designers who are working on the project. So we definitely do use social media a lot, but I, I can't necessarily say that there is a direct co correlation to us posting and then getting a project. I think most of our clients have seen something that we've built or spoken to someone who has worked with us that perhaps they've seen first on social media, but then they also wanted to hear from people who have worked with us. So I guess it does go hand in hand and we definitely do work on all platforms because we love the work that we do and we want to share it with others. No, I don't blame you. So when you talk to a client, do you visit the property and from there you come up with the plan of, or do they say, Hey, I, I would like to put, you know, so-and-so in this space. How do you like design the interior of an apartment or, or residential home? Typically we, always visit a space. It's very hard to experience the space and know what it's like without being inside of that. However, over COVID, we actually perfected the virtual facet of being able to design without actually going into a space. But personally, I always prefer going to the space, even seeing the neighborhood. Like when you say residential, we're doing a lot of multifamily projects. So oh, I like okay. to see the neighborhood and understand who the target tenant is when we're doing office space. I want to see the office culture, understand the mission of the brand. When we're doing healthcare, I want to be able to, a lot of the healthcare projects that we're doing are not ground up, they're existing spaces. So I want to go there, I want to visit, I want to see the patients and really, you know, and that's something that we've definitely had to cut back on over COVID. Right. But even so, we are, you know, a lot of our healthcare projects are getting back on track now and they're cut off from the residents. So, you know, there's no issue with you know, the residents being in contact or anything like that, but just really seeing the space and being able to visualize how it's getting used, I think is so important to making sure that the function is really being executed in terms of the design. Okay, no, that sounds good. So, and it's funny because you beat me to it because I was going to ask you, do you present your client with a model of, of what they want, but you do it virtually now? I mean, that's, that's amazing. Okay, so yes, we do. We <laughs> definitely have that option and we've been building up our VR room where people can actually feel like they're walking through a space. We have special glasses in a room where you can really experience your space before it's built. But a typical project, we do have a process that we really follow in all our design pro projects where a client is able to visualize in the best way possible without it actually being built. So we wow. show them all the materials, we show them 3Ds, we'll show them different images and whatever is needed so that they can actually visualize the space. And then we give them a very detailed set of drawings that has everything down on paper. In addition to a spec list that has every single material that will be in this space. So we really try to be as detailed as possible so that the client knows what they're getting into before the project has even begun. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, technology is, is just an amazing tool that could be used, I mean, 
in real estate, you know that because you're using it now. So is there a, a, a type of preference in terms of homes or apartments that you prefer to work in or does it matter the space because you're there anyway? Um, what, what, is there a preference for you at, at this point in time or again, it's something that as long as the project uh, is successful, you're happy? Well, for sure that <laughs> project is successful. That's good for me. But I, there are certain projects that I prefer more than others. We have quite a diverse portfolio. We're doing so many different types of projects and we have different departments in our team that work on the different types of projects. Personally, for me, I love the nonprofits. I feel like those are spaces that people really get to enjoy just, and people are really building them and being a part of them from the goodness of their heart. And I love that. And as a firm, we've done quite a few give backs and pro bono work for charities and nonprofits. And it's something that I really love to be a part of. And that would definitely be my favorite type of work to do. No, and again, people see what you do and they're going to reach out to you, whether it's a nonprofit or a profit type of business. And I think, you, I mean, first of all, to do that, that's amazing that you're doing pro bono work, you're, you're working with charities, um, and you just get your name out there even more and more than ever before. So do you like office markets at all to work in if, if you get a chance? I mean, especially now with what's happening with COVID and more and more people working from home, would that space somewhat hinder your ability to, 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 you know, to do designs because we're seeing more and more people working from home. Did my question make any sense at all? <laughs> I, I hear what you're asking. So not necessarily. I think that as designers, we have been researching all safety protocols to make sure that people who are coming into the office are safe and not only are safe, but also feel safe. And across the board, I've been hearing from so many people, besides the obvious ease of working from home, people really do enjoy going into an office and they miss office culture. So yeah. it's on us to be able to bring an office to employers and employees that is safe for all. And we've really been working on that. We have so many technological features that we've been introducing to our clients that help make the space safer and antimicrobial materials, which don't absorb germs. And we've been incorporating a lot of that and so, uh, safety social distancing protocols. So we've definitely been doing a lot of research and a lot of implementation of ways to make the office space feel safe and not just office space. I mean, any of our projects at this point, we've really been keeping safety at the forefront of our designs because number one with design is making sure that people can enjoy the space. And that's what we really want. We want to maximize the spaces that we're designing for people to be able to use them in the best way possible. And in a pandemic time, they need to feel safe in order to do that. No, no, exactly. So I wanted to, Let's touch base on the pandemic. Did it affect business in any way? And if it did or didn't, what did you learn from it? Of course, it affected us. I, March, April, construction was very much on hold. Yeah. I mean, there was a lockdown. I, I didn't leave for like a month. I was indoors. Um, so, you know, that definitely, definitely impacted us. But what we always try to focus on is how we can learn from everything that's going on and basically innovate in times like that. So we've really been pivoting in certain ways. Uh, we introduced virtual Zoom backgrounds mm -hmm. for offices to use so that even when people are not in the, I'm actually using one right now. So this is more of a home. But it looks result. good though. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you think of it? <laughs> no, it looks real good. It looks, it looks real to me. Every time I see a background compared to mine, I always say, my God, that looks so good. It, uh, no, that's great. I love it. Yeah. So we've been doing it for offices where we are branding them so that even when the employees are not working from an office space, they have that sense of professionalism when they're doing Zoom calls, which is 
pretty much all day. Yeah. Uh, that's one, one way that we pivoted. We've been doing a lot more virtual tours for people and even in terms of executing our vision, figuring out a way to do that in ways that clients don't have to actually come and see and meet in person. We've also been, as a team, our entire team is not back in the office yet. So we've been learning ways how to be able to work as a team while not together. So there's just been so much that we've been taking in and trying to learn and trying to do and really just to keep our projects going and to keep our clients happy while making sure, like I said earlier, that everyone feels safe and still able to use their creativity. So what's, what's next for the designers group? What, what are you looking to do in the next three to six months? Or is that too far ahead right now? I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> the sky is the limit for us. I mean, in a short time, we have opened up three branches. Uh, we're approaching our fifth anniversary in New York, so we haven't even been here for that long. Wow. Um, and, you know, we're really just always looking to grow and innovate and really improve the world. I think that our environment affects us in so many ways that we don't even realize. And as designers, we have that ability to impact the spaces that we're in and the world in a positive way. And I take that job very seriously. I want to make sure that we can do it in all ways. So we've really been just trying to see where we can fill that void and continue to grow and just really impact more spaces and environments. Do you, are you, it, with your three locations, if somebody called you from Chicago, would you be able to do a project there or are you just focusing on your three locations right now? Oh, of course. We actually do have a project in Chicago. That oh, that crazy. was just a guess. <laughs> so I flew there, took a tour of the property, and we're doing that project through our New York office. So our main office right now is the New York office, and we're doing projects across the U.S. Literally, probably, I wouldn't say every state yet, but... A lot of we'll states. get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, and I mean Miami was kind of our next move just because of the volume of projects that we were doing there. So it just made sense. And I mean, we're looking to continue to grow and expand. So we have our eyes on a couple of other places where we're planning on opening offices. So and internationally is also something that we've been looking into. So stay tuned. They're That's definitely exciting. will growth and development happening from us. No, it's very exciting. Well, first of all, Bleema, I want to thank you so much for being on Peter Peer Real Estate Show. I mean, I, first of all, I appreciate it. You take your time out of your busy schedule. If somebody wanted to become a designer, are there any books or classes you would recommend for first timers? I always recommend that people go to school and do things in the right way, but that's not to take away that when it comes to design, there has to be that innate creativity and experience. So we've been having interns coming to our office and I have people asking me all the time, like, oh, I want to, I'm thinking about going into a career of interior design. Is there anything you can tell me? And I always tell them, come to our office, spend the day, see what it's like, see if it's something that's for you. So many people are unsure and I want them to understand design is glamorous. There's the fun aspect, but there also is a lot of detailed work and you have to make sure that everything is well thought out and thought through and there are processes to put that in place. So I want them to understand what it is before they're getting into it. So really, if there's anyone out there who is interested and wants to even just come for a day to our office, we're so happy to be able to do that. And we have interns as well that come to our office and get credits. So really, we're happy to give that work experience, but I always say, if you're doing something, do it right. And the best way is to really go to school, learn all the processes, learn all the programs, and then you'll be ready to actually get on site on the field experience. No, I think that's the best way is to be there, get to know the process, like you said, and you learn by doing. So Bleem, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, what's the best way? The best way would probably be email. 
but we are on pretty much all the social media platforms. So they can always send a message and whoever is managing that platform will let me know. No, it sounds good. Well, again, thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I really thank appreciate you. it. This is such a great show. I'm so happy when you asked me. I, I, I didn't get a chance to say earlier, but you really, anytime I needed help with anything, I knew I could always ask you. And it's just so nice to have people in the industry that you know if there is anything you can ask. So I really do appreciate that. And I'm so happy to be here. And I love the content that you put out. So, you know, well, waiting well, listen, to it's, it's easy for me when I have guests like you. I mean, you make <laughs> it easier. So, but again, Bleeman, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. No problem. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Well, everyone, that was Blima Erin Troy, and you can find her at thedesignersgroup.com, thedesignersgroup.com. Blima, thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. Really appreciate it. You can find me at peer to peer real estate.com. That's peer to number two, peer real estate.com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, please, when you get a chance, go to Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe, leave a review, tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, just a couple more things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it, God, and protect it. I know I say that after every show, but I really believe it. And I also believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate, I'm Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe.